Let's let, 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 let revise the question uh, so first. Let me rephrase the question to uh, what do you think should be the focus of government hmm. uh, in uh, incentivizing uh, industries to actually join the initiative of making India. Industry. Right. Uh, that is the right question. That is good. Yeah. Can we, Can we start? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, sir, what role uh, do you think the government should uh, ensure uh, so that the industries could actually uh, come in and join the initiatives of making India and digital India? See, the government ha has a very, very important role to play. The basic problem that any country has is competitiveness, right, of their industry versus global. Now, if the cost of production, right, in India is going to be higher compared to other, other places in the world, definitely the investments are not going to happen. So, what the government need to do, they actually have to facilitate and come out with incentives to reduce the cost of production in India. Once the cost of production gets reduced, automatically the profits of investing in India is going to be higher and the people will definitely come and invest and contribute towards making in India. Currently, what the policies that the government actually has adopted is that they actually are raising duties and by raising duties, they are able to attract investment to take into consideration the local market, the whatever opportunity that they have in the local market. But in the process, the global market, which has got much higher volume, gets missed out. So that's what I believe is that the government should be doing, right? They come out with in incentives. Thank yeah. You, sir. Uh, and what are your thoughts about this uh, conference which is being organized by JICO? See, I believe that the conference is great because this basically bring has, Jiruka has been able to bring all the players on the field, right? Their regulator was there, the DOT special secretary was there, and the various key verticals, you know, who are in contributing to the policies were there. So I think it's a great thing that the Jiruka has done. So I, and similar initiatives actually help in kind of cutting through across the various points of view and able to crystallize the right kind of policy making process, right? Which the government of India is going to uh, do in, in future, in, which will help the industry to flourish and progress further and contribute towards making India and digital India. Is it Thank fine? You, sir. Thank you. Okay. Hello, sir. So, Hi. with regards to uh, all the recent policies that have come about to make in India, digital India, DIPV response papers, mm -hmm. how do you see India in the next five years? Well, I think these policies have uh, identified several important areas which India would need to address if it needs to move forward and to be a player in, uh, uh, in the telecom s s uh, sector or in the telecom space internationally. There, is, there are two things that this, the policy needs to further do, which is to recognize the state of development in India and also to recognize the importance of the fact that telecom space is largely an, inter an industry space. It's a private industry space today. It is no longer a, player where uh, in a place where government is a significant or a major player. Its role is more regulatory. So to recognize that the best way of regulating it is to align incentives for private sector is something that they would need to do to ensure, because if the government itself is not a player in the market, then it has its own vested interest and public interest to ensure that the private sector players can succeed in delivering the, the digital economy that India is banking on. So that will mean whether it is investments in infrastructure, whether it's in services, whether it's in applications, platforms, all those things will come from private sector, and policy would need to address that. So with regards to your views on today's conference in stirring these issues that you just brought mm -hmm. up, may I have your views, please? Yeah, I think today's conference, uh, I, again, was good in identifying many of these. The need to reconcile India's aspirations from a public policy perspective, as well as the recognition that telecom technologies are global in their, uh, their manifestation. There is no, long, no such thing as Indian telecom technology. There's no such thing as Indian telecoms in that sense. We're dealing with global networks. So I think many of those issues cropped up in their own way. And much will depend on how 
the government recognizes that these are important issues, how it works in partnership with the stakeholders. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, with regards to all the governmental po policies that have been floated, the Digital India, Make in India, etc., where do you see India in the next four to five years? See, from the telecom side, uh, 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 we are addressing the communications issue. And uh, we have uh, just now, uh, the Telecom Commission, as it is, has finalized the uh, National Digital Communications Policy uh, 2018. Uh, it's now up to, uh, going up to the uh, government approval of the cabinet is expected shortly. Uh, and uh, that's where we are. Uh, but the uh, contents largely are already in the public domain. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the thrust is on Connect India. Um, um, uh, when we say Connect India, we mean uh, deep connections, uh, uh, um, uh, multifold than what you uh, see presently, um, uh, which also includes broadband, people's access to broadband, improved people's access to broadband and internet, um, uh, government services, uh, as well as... Uh, um, uh, services from uh, um, operators, uh, uh, businesses, um, uh, B2C, B2B, uh, just name it. I mean, that's what uh, we, we want to catch up with the world um, as quickly as possible on that. Mm, uh, then is Propel India, which uh, talks about technologies. Uh, mm, we want to get into the latest uh, um, in, in the world, and that's what, and the policies uh, surrounding that. And the last is the Secure India. Uh, and a key element of that Secure India is uh, not just the technology aspect, but we are also addressing certain social aspects uh, uh, like disaster management, uh, mm, uh, uh, women's, uh, the uh, getting uh, the gender divide in uh, access to um, uh, the uh, uh, to communications devices and communications per se, uh, then uh, 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 then disadvantaged sections getting uh, better access. Uh, to that even if they don't have uh, um, uh, their own uh, devices per se as to how to provide all of them. So uh, to make it more inclusive, more, uh, more, make it more penetrative. That's what we are trying to uh, do. And um, along with that, um, there's another uh, work in the offing, as you must have heard, the 5G forum, wherein we are preparing India uh, for the advent of 5G. And uh, we expect that India will be in the 5G ecosystem almost on par with the world, unlike in previous eras where we are much uh, delayed um, uh, in 4G. We were, people say we are about five years delayed in, uh, uh, in 3G, we were about 10 years. But this time we hope to be on time. And more important, and equally important, we also uh, will have a stake in the 5G standards, howsoever minimal it might be. For the first time, we are as India as a nation may be entering the 5G standards ecosystem. Um, um, uh, we are, the preparation for that is important because uh, we do expect that if we, uh, we are able to capture the, um, uh, the entry at the early, uh, a lot of uh, manufacturing ecosystem, which, will become, which is vital for 5G, uh, may come to India. And India and the Make in India program, Make in India for the world, may become a uh, sure reality. Um, uh, by just by ensuring that our policies are proactive and upfront. That's the way we look at it. So with regards to today's conference, do you think it is adequate to put such vision into Certainly. I mean, um, but this conference is uh, pretty timely um, and address uh, topical issues, as I must say. Policy issues are important because um, uh, uh, if you, you, you can't expect good implementations with bad policies. And uh, discussion on that, uh, public discussion on that um, uh, is important and uh, uh, can't be more timely than uh, it has got today. Um, certainly, as an institution, uh, a multidisciplinary institution, uh, which um, uh, focuses on economics, uh, politics, governance, um, and uh, law, um, I think um, um, policy issues cover all of them, and uh, uh, the faculty um, uh, will have a lot of food for thought and uh, um, uh, uh, research work over going over the next two to three years.